Hi everyone, it's Wendy. I'm back today to um, start the uh, tutorial process for making these um, hardcover ring binder sort of uh, vintage looking books or journals. Uh, this is the one that I showed you last week and um, I'm just going to um, basically I'm going to do this in steps and you can just follow along with me and uh, that's probably the best way to approach it because I only get a half hour on my um, camera and then I have to go to the next step anyway so I figured if we do this in steps then we can do it you know over a couple of weeks and uh, hopefully we'll get a whole book done so today Leo and I if he'll let me come on now darling move along move along because I've got glue sorry about the noise um, Today, Leo and I are going to show you not only how to headbutt, but also... <laughs> oh man, you're just too freaking cute. Um, we're just going to make the covers, uh, not decorate. We're not doing any decorating yet. I actually save my decorating to the end. So um, we're going to make the covers, front and, and back, and we're also going to put together... Um, I do uh, two... Uh, chipboard inserts as well and that just helps everything stay uh, tidy. So we're going to do all four of those hopefully within a half hour. So this is what you're going to need. I've made this little template uh, to show where I have my uh, little um, holes and I actually I'll measure that out for you and I'll put it in the description below just so that you have it. I made this, this is seven inches long and it doesn't matter how wide. But I just did that so that it would match, Leo honey, uh, it would match the, the seven inch long um, chipboard pieces uh, so that you can see where we're going to mark them to put our holes. We don't do that until we finish covering. And then we have these two larger pieces. The two larger pieces are five and a half by seven and a half and it's heavy chipboard. It's important that it's really heavy. It's not very pliable. Um, the interior, so you need two of those, five and a half by seven and a half, and then you need two five by sevens. These are medium. They move a little bit more. This would be similar to the chipboard that you'd find at the end, at the back of a tablet, you know, like a nice watercolor paper or art paper. This is the same thickness. So those don't have to be as heavy as the cover. If you have more of this heaviness, by all means, you can use it for this. So cut two five by seven and two five and a half by seven and a half. Then what you want to do is you want to pick out what you want for your cover, uh, the background of your cover. And I try and pick something that this is, um, it's a bold pattern, but by the time we put some decorating on it and whatnot, and by the time we age it, it's going to kind of settle down and recess back. So I thought because I love pardon me, botanicals. I had to go for this botanical. And then on the inside of the cover I'm going for this sort of washed out pink color. So let's do that. Let's cover the covers. Uh, and it's, uh, you're going to find this boring, I am certain. <laughs> but it's just a matter of putting glue, getting it. I'm using Fabri-Tac because for these purposes, I find it is very reliable. Uh, things are not going to shift on you. Once you have them down, they're down. So I like to put some on the interior as well. But the edges are what are really important for gluing at this stage. I put my cap on and lay it on its side. And then I'm just going to, I already cut my papers, seven and a half by five and a half so that they matched. And I like using a um, cardstock for this because it does give it extra strength. Um, yeah, so we've got that one. And we'll do this one. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. It is, um, we're going through a real cold snap, but I'm okay with a cold snap as long as we don't get a whole lot more snow. <laughs> I 
I know that sounds terrible. You'd think I'd be used to it, living on the East Coast. You know, it's winter. Of course it's going to snow. Of course. Oh well. It's all good. So then we put this on. I just tap it down and that gets it right to the bottom. Make sure it's at the edge. Like so. Now we're going to put on the other side. Pardon me. Still uh, got a bit of a cold, but it's to be expected this time of year, right? It's uh, take Stella out for a walk and try and avoid the ice and um, and hope that one doesn't get a cold, but had my shot, so I'm good. <laughs> I am good. Gosh, I guess he... I've been coffee staining some uh, paper the last two days, and Leo is literally laying on top of the paper that's in the middle of being stained. So there may be some paw prints on that paper. So yeah, the, uh, the things you want to try and maybe for the next video, we'll look at doing um, maybe two different versions of the, of the insert pages. So for that, um, in preparation, uh, maybe you could find yourself uh, a couple of tags or at least have some uh, scrapbook paper because if you don't have those pre-made alteration tags and whatnot it's no big deal we can um, we can make things up as we go um, but if you do have an alteration tag or an inventory tag that sort of thing then it's be a good thing for you to have at the ready so those are the two covers and if you preferred you could put the pink on the outside I just like that sort of thing on the inside. So if you have tags and maybe a sort of a six inch high bag, um, a glassine bag or it could be a craft bag, you could make your own, uh, but six inches by four inches if you have it, that would be a good thing to have for the next video. Um, see this is, I'm using this um, see how it's coming apart at the bottom, but that's okay because I'm using it uh, on these fairly rough edges and I don't want to break out a new one for that purpose. I'll break out a new one <laughs> for, you know, when I'm doing um, the interior, um, the pages and whatnot, but for the covers, we're going to just use the last little bit that this little fella has in him. And you can choose to put more aging if you want. That's kind of what I like. And this page already has aging on it. You can see that some of the fluff coming off. So we'll just age it up some more. Some other things in this series that you might need besides the bags and the alteration tag. If you have a couple of interesting envelopes, put those to the side. Um, if you have the window envelopes, by all means, pull those to the side. And um, that jeweler's envelope, which is quite a specialty item, if you have something like that, uh, that would be good to set off to the side as well because we'll be using that. Um, we will make the journal, the journal page as well. Uh, and that one, I used uh, the um, a Tattered Dream Kind of like the three-sided uh, or the three-fold time card, but we'll if you don't have that, it's not essential. You can use we'll use a piece of scrapbook paper. So have a couple of pieces of scrapbook paper at the ready as well. So there we go. We've got two the covers. Now for the interior pages. Um, I'm using, this is Tsunami Rose, 
moving those out of the way for you, Gail. <laughs> um, and these are um, two printables that I got from Tsunami Rose, and I will try and link to those printables below. Uh, and I've cut it, it actually prints out as a full page. I've cut the bottom, it was a little tiny bit, like an eighth of an inch, and there was like an eighth of an inch on this side. So I cut the bottom a little bit off, and then I, or I, actually I cut it at the top, and then I cut this to um, seven inches, because I know this is the height of the insert page. So I did that on the two different um, pages. Um, and like I said, you don't have to use a printable. You can use a piece of scrapbook paper if you want. You could use, um, if you want it to make these sturdier, um, you could by all means use cardboard or cardstock as well over the top. But I haven't found it necessary with the, with the uh, journals that I've made uh, like this, in this style. So I put this on one side. And then I want to take and um, I guess I want to put this on here. I know that there's a little bit of whoops, there's a little bit of white here at the back. I could have cut both sides. That would have been the smart thing to do. <laughs> ah. I'm doing it this way because I kind of want the front of the page, the paper, to go all the way around. It doesn't have to do, you don't have to do it this way, but that's kind of what I wanted. So I've got this terrible pair of scissors because I didn't bring my good scissors out of the art room. I'm doing this filming out here in the dining area because it's better lighting. There's all this snow and grayness outside. <clears throat> So I'm going to, once again, cover the inside. Like I said, this is quite a boring video, I'm sure, because really all we're going to do is cover and, and poke a few holes. But you have to get started somewhere, right? Oh, wait. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right on the edge there. I put that the cap in my mouth. You probably figured that out by the way my voice sounded. So... Fold it like that. It's such great paper, Daisy. It really is. For, for this sort of application, it's, you couldn't get anything more perfect. So we just cut that off. So that's number one. And let's do this one as well. Just as simple as this. So yeah, and you might want to, um, if you have some old pieces of lace or an old piece of linen, an old linen hanky or whatever that you might want to incorporate into the decoration, you know, might want to pull that together as well. Just kind of fun. This is the way I do things. I, I start preparing. Um, by gathering materials that I might want to use in it. So I've put this once again farther out, whoops, because then I have that white available. I'm just going to cut that off, simple as that. So you can see the process goes for the cover fairly quickly, uh, and it's not it's not um, slow for the pages either. It's it's more uh, you know deciding on your how you're going to decorate based on the supplies that you have. That um, is probably the uh, the most time consuming bit, but I think that's kind of the fun bit, right? You know, thinking about how you're going to make it even more beautiful. I, uh, that's the part I really love. You can see there's a bit of space at the bottom here, but that's okay. 
where the paper hasn't gone right to the bottom. I'm going to try and shift it a little, and if I can't, then, uh, I guess I cut that one a little short, then uh, I'll just ink it. It's no problem. No problem. So I'm just going to ink one of these because I don't want you to spend a whole video watching me ink. So I just, like I did on the cover, very quickly. Like so. And then on the other side. Like so. Alright, so we know that's the outside edge because it's covered in paper. I mean, you could use it the other way too. I just, that's kind of the way I've been uh, making them. So this is what I do now. I've made this template and like I said, I will, I'll measure that for next time for you so you know and I'll also try and write it in the description below. Uh, but I just bought that end of that template on the five by seven. I get my pen and I mark a dot in the center because I want everything to line up really well. So in the center and then I'll do that on here as well. And then with this one, what we need to do because it's seven and a half by um, five and a half, we just need to kind of have center it and have like a quarter of an inch on either side and go like so. And I, for the cover, just to be safe, um, because I don't want it to shift, oops, I get my crocodile. I'm going to poke these holes like so and like so. <laughs> The hard part is getting those bits out of there. And then I'm going to, instead of using the template, just to be sure that these are even, I use the first cover uh, and I put mark them. So I'm using the big hole on the crocodile. Um, I don't know what the size of that is, but it is the bigger one. There we go. And I'll use that throughout the book. We'll use the, the bigger hole. And right here. And the other thing that I do is, um, what's important is the size of your, your eyelets. Uh, make sure these are a little bit bigger in terms of the hole, and I think it's a six millimeter hole. Um, and that just makes it a little easier for your, I um, don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's a six millimeter hole, it's a little bit bigger. It does make it a little bit easier for your um, uh, circle clasps, you know, the rings, there you go, the rings to go through. So, that's an important bit. So there's one, and there's two. And I don't put anything on the rings until I've got all the pieces made. So, we can do a couple more of these. Um, the rings. The, um, the, uh, I like, sorry, the, with these eyelets, I like the page that's going to be facing you. I like to have that finished edge on the top. It doesn't really matter um, a great deal, but 
that's just the way I like to do it. Uh, and um, so the rings, the rings I've been using are a two inch diameter ring. Um, you could probably go a little smaller, maybe to one and a half inch, but the beauty of the two inch ring is that you'll be able to add more things if you want uh, at a later date. So totally up to you, you how you want to go, but I don't think I'd go much smaller than a one and a half inch ring. If you can get the two inch, that's a great way to go. I got, um, picked mine up at um, Michael's. And by the way, they sell them in the scrapbooking section and they're more expensive there. So, <laughs> if you go to the, um, but if you go to the, like the sewing section, you know, where they have their uh, self-healing boards and they have their um, sewing scissors and that sort of stuff, if you get them down there, they're much cheaper and you can get six, a pack of six for like $3.99, $4.99. That's what it cost me here in Canada. Um, but if you buy them in the scrapbook section, you, you get like two for the same price. It just, I was like, gosh, it doesn't make sense to me. So um, ask the, uh, ask the uh, person who's working there if that's the best price, if you can only find them in the scrapbooking section. Um, definitely check out the sewing section. Uh, I just happened to luck into that, which was fantastic. So you can see I just decided to keep going since, since we're here and we're chatting. All right. Using the template. The template I'm using, it's easier um, it's safe to use for these inside covers because it's exactly the same length. I used the, uh, sorry, I'm doing this at a strange angle. I used the um, book cover on itself for the second cover because those are, I wasn't sure I could be precise with my measurement um, because I was just kind of eyeballing it, so. That's my story. <laughs> and if my husband were here, he'd say, and I'm sticking to it. So we'll just put one more eyelid in, and then we have, we will have finished step one in making the book. So there you go. We've got all of these items. Sorry, that's upside down. No, that's fine. Um, that is probably a good lesson to learn. I literally did do that upside down uh, because I put the grommets on. They need to be like so, so that you can see it. You see what I mean? The, the flower is oriented this way, but because they're flowers, they're fine because there are some oriented up that way. So I'm okay. <clears throat> but. Keep that in mind. Do as I say, not as I do, as my old teachers used to say. Okay, guys, that's it. That is the beginning of our um, ring journal. And I will be back in uh, next week with the next step where we'll start doing some of the interior pages. Uh, and once again, this is the sort of journal that we're going to be making. So I think it'll be a fun little process. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining Leo and I today, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk to you real soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.